With apparent impenetrable bunkers being such a crucial part of modern warfare, it's no wonder that bombs built to destroy these safe houses are on the rise. Being able to destroy such a well-guarded area is like hitting the mother load for an aggressor. There's the potential to take out intelligence depots, weapon storage facilities, and key individuals on the enemy's side. But attacking these bunkers is no easy task. You need a particular type of weapon to penetrate layers of protection and then have something left to take out the target itself. Let's take a look at how this works. Bunker bombs are much more than just throwing a bigger explosive in the direction of the target. Bunker busters are special purpose bombs where the sole purpose is to punch through ground, concrete, or whatever is blocking a target. This kind of bomb has been around since World War II, when British Air Force aviators developed 22,000-pound blockbuster or earthquake bombs to penetrate Nazi bunkers. In 1944, the German battleship Tirpitz, the sister ship to the Bismarck, was hit by this kind of bomb and sank. Technology has advanced a long way since the Tirpitz was sunk. Modern bunker busters work a lot like a full metal jacket bullet. The copper jacket covering the lead bullet lets the slug go more easily through whatever it's fired at. Bunker bombs use the same concept, but instead of a copper jacket, it's a hardened steel case. And instead of a bullet, the bomb contains powerful explosives. More recent designs for Bunker Buster missiles began around the bombing campaign against Yugoslavia. They also came to light after it was discovered that Iraqi underground dugouts were so deep in the ground that there wasn't an existing bomb that could reach them. This was until the U.S. Air Force implemented a new bomb in the NATO-led bombing campaign against Serbia in 1999 and during the early parts of the Afghanistan and Iraq missions in the early 2000s. At the height of the first Gulf War, U.S. fighter jets struck an underground shelter for civilians in Iraq's Amrira city, killing 400 people. A decade later, in the Second Iraq War, the U.S. again invaded Iraq, and its bomber jets heavily pounded Baghdad with bunker busters. The U.S. said they were using the weapon to hit underground command centers of the Iraqi army and bring the war to a quick end. Israel has also used bunker bombs to get to heavily fortified Palestinian command centers. One particular significant drop of this type of weapon happened in 2014. The newer version of the American Bunker Buster has a 16-foot casing and an artillery barrel 14.5 inches in diameter and covered with solid steel. Inside, you'll find over 600 pounds of tritonal explosive, which is made up of 80% TNT and 20% aluminum powder. The nose of the bomb provides accuracy with a laser guidance system. This shines a light upon the designated target so the bomb knows precisely what it's aiming for. So that it stays accurate, there are tall retractable fins at the end of the bomb to help keep it stable. This new design was named the GBU-28, and it weighed approximately 4,400 pounds at a massive 19 feet tall. The bomb is dropped from a plane so that the bomb picks up a huge amount of speed and kinetic energy, which allows it to penetrate thick defenses. The principle therefore uses basic physics to use gravity as the most effective means of propulsion. So when the bomb hits the Earth, it's like a massive shot from a nail gun. In tests, the GBU-28 has penetrated a huge 100 feet of earth or 20 feet of concrete. Before a mission, intelligence sources or aerial satellite images reveal where the bunker is. The GBU-28 or equivalent is loaded into a B-2 stealth bomber, an F-111 or similar fighter plane. The bomb itself works because of two simple reasons. The hardened steel shell that is able to withstand the drop and the timer fuse that delays the blast to take out the target. The rigid tube that the bomb is contained in is extremely heavy and narrow. 
This gives the bomb the ability to puncture the toughest of surfaces. The highly hardened steel helps the bombs withstand and pierce through the Earth's surface without blowing its complete load. The other thing that avoids this is the delay before the bomb goes off. This is usually done by using a delay fuse or a hard target smart fuse so that the bomb blows up at just the right time to create the most damage. It's clear that bunker bombs offer a massive advantage during warfare as they can penetrate targets that no other bombs can get to, even if bunkers are deep underground. But they're not without their disadvantages. Despite being very accurate for such a big bomb, there is still a big risk of civilian casualties and the weapon has a history of this. Also, from a military perspective, the bomb's massive weight means that only one can be used at a time unless bigger aircraft are used. Smaller military-grade aircraft such as the F-15 Eagle can only drop one during a flight. To combat this, a smaller twin bomb known as the Blue 109 Bunker Buster Bomb is used for the same purpose. But at half the weight of its big GBU-28 brother, it's far less destructive. Another issue with the GBU-28 is that its laser guidance system doesn't navigate well in bad weather conditions, but this has been addressed and improvements with more recent bunker busters. A new version of the bunker buster bomb, known as the GBU-72, is expected to be more powerful than its predecessors. A few tests of the new design were carried out in 2021, and new trials continued throughout 2022. Some primary differences between the older and newer designs revolve around their weight and internal navigation system. With the new GPS-assisted internal navigation system, the GBU-72 will have the ability to work under any weather conditions and solve a major issue with its predecessor. The issue with weight has also been solved. With a 600-pound weight difference, the GBU-72 can also be carried by different bombers like a conventional strategic bomber or a stealth bomber. Bunkers are only continuing to be a feature when it comes to modern warfare and protecting assets. Nations like Iran and North Korea insist on using these to protect their most prized assets. This means now more than ever, bunker bombs are crucial to combat these threats. Hamas has been the latest group to employ the tactic of burrowing deep into the ground to hoard weapons and other assets. This has reignited the debate of using bunker bombs to neutralize this stockpile and potentially protect civilian lives. But as we've seen over the years, it's not quite as simple as this, and bunker bombs come with significant consequences. What do you think about bunker bombs? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.